What I love. Hello, I'm Scruffy, and today I'm taking an analytical listen to a song from the Splatoon series. The final competitive event of Splatoon 2, the last Splatfest, is soon approaching, and so I thought it apropos to reflect on the music of Splatoon and then go into greater detail on one song in particular. My inkling to create this video came from a deceptively simple question. What genre is Splatoon's music? That's complicated because Splatoon covers multiple genres in its various gameplay modes. Just to name some, we've got punk, a bit of alt-rock, ska, j-pop, teen pop, EDM, Celtic punk, punk jazz, vaporwave, urban, with progressively more experimental electronic offshoots until we hit Sam and Run's mutilated cello samples, and I'm probably missing a few at that. Not to mention, Splatoon includes elements like heavily affected vocals and synthesizers that are unique to Splatoon, and venture outside the tropes of most of these genres. So, I'm gonna go ahead and call it cross-genre. Maybe that's a cop-out, but the Splatoon soundtrack is all about mixing things up, putting together colors that clash, and merging real-world pop culture icons and eras to create the culture of Inklings and Octolings. Although this world crosses genres visually and audially a lot, it still maintains coherence and suspends your disbelief when everything can contribute to a central mood and gameplay experience. It's all loud, bold, and... I'm gonna say... Booyah. Most of it seems to have a touch of 90s fashion to it. You'll notice that a lot of music in Splatoon, no matter the genre that inspired it, puts boldness first, focusing on strange gestures, atypical harmonies, and brazen power chords to deliver its unique taste of in-your-face action. Little of it wants to sound traditional, and little of it focuses on a long-term path or destination, which seems inspired by punk ideologies. If these songs didn't come from Splatoon, and were just full-on punk songs championing nonconformity, maybe I'd think twice about analyzing them with music theory. But within the context of tying together a video game experience, they're worth studying. I wanted to focus on one song that's particularly integrated with timed gameplay modes in both Splatoon 1 and 2. It's a one minute long theme called Now or Never, and it plays when you have one minute left in a timed turf war. It illustrates something that changes about the loud, bold, and booyah mood between these two games. Let's listen to specific parts of this song, and actually, let's start with Splatoon 2. I wanted to point something out in the opening measure. So, We've got a guitar for character, bass for power, a synthesizer for flavor, all playing a scale called the Lydian scale. It's similar to major scales, but with the fourth note raised, which adds this extra feeling of ascending, since the fourth note now resolves right into the fifth. Playing up the scale builds tension, and never landing on that upper C note that concludes the scale never lets the tension go. The melody after this stays within a Lydian scale, but the bass and guitar have this funky syncopated rhythm that goes right along with the drums. After the second verse, we get a chorus of sorts where we can tell that the vocals aren't even inkling language anymore. They're a crowd singing one syllable. You hear that Lydian scale from the beginning, and the bass elaborates a little. I like it. It's like your whole team getting behind this melody, and the one point of the song where excitement can breathe for a bit. But now it's time to build for the climax, where the drums emphasize offbeats and the rhythm is twice as fast as the first verse. After this phrase comes something unexpected, that begins with half a beat of hesitation. The melody is still A to G, but the power chords underneath are B-flat to A-flat, which don't resolve back to the C Lydian scales in the next measure. 
This isn't the time for perfect resolution. It's time to build that Lydian scale until that one last group of four notes that gets so close to resolving but never does. Because up until the very last second of gameplay, there's no room for feeling like the task is finished or the song is over. It's always tightly performed, powerful, and in your face. Even stricter to the rhythm is the remixed version of this song that plays during Splatfests. This is more of a teen pop rendition, letting the vocals come out clearer, and overall going for a clean, futuristic sound with an entirely synthesized band. It's an interesting twist that's still bold, but in a more mainstream way. Where the regular Now or Never galvanizes your little team in a rough-edged, individual manner, the Splatfest Now or Never galvanizes the world in celebration. A fest, led by Pearl and Marina. With that in mind, Let's take a trip back to the same theme in Splatoon 1, right off the bat. You hear the whole band engaged in the Lydian scale in the key of A, but this time there's less rhythmic complexity. It's just quarter notes, and it adds a note to get eight of them. We're still feeling a sense of rising tension, but no particular instrument or rhythm gets highlighted. Next, this is the important part. You hear the same melody, sure, but rather than that syncopated rhythm, we've got hard power chords on guitar every two beats, and the drums are constantly at maximum speed. This in particular sounds like punk rock, where complexity isn't as important as aggression and the lyrics, if we could discern them. Even the fourth measure of each phrase and the chorus are simplified to bearer elements. There's a lot going on for sure, but there's no crowd singing the melody here. The bass and guitar still remain just as distorted, and the drums remain just as fast. The energy here is not as dynamic. It stays in one spot for more of the song. And that's okay. It's driving. Once again, loud, bold, and booyah. The only break we get from that energy is at the dominant chord part before the vocals come back in. Again, the rhythms and harmonies here are simpler and more focused on the crunch of that guitar. At the end of the song, we get more Lydian scales from the beginning, and every instrument joins in that quarter note rhythm until... This conclusion arguably leaves us with more tension, because not only does it not complete this altered Lydian scale, it also doesn't end on a downbeat. It doesn't end on one like that last note in Splatoon 2. The Splatfest version of this song, again, goes with an entirely electronic, more mainstream rendition of these simpler rhythms and harmonies that highlights the Squid Sisters. Amid all of this, am I saying that this earlier version of Now or Never is inferior? No, of course not. But I do find the differences between the two games' versions to be more than a matter of re-recording the track for posterity. After all, if Splatoon 2 has a new soundtrack, why not write a new Minute Left theme? I think it's actually a matter of the canon between Splatoon 1 and 2. On the official soundtrack release for Splatoon 1 called Splatoon, well done, the liner notes suggest that the band that performs most of the Turf War music, Squid Squad, was also the composer of Now or Never. Squid Squad is a four-member band, three Inklings and a Sea Urchin, and before even releasing this official album, their music was apparently widely popular among Squid Kids and became a standard soundtrack for Turf Wars. A punk anthem, you might say. After the events of Splatoon 1, Squid Squad disbanded, and Wet Floor takes their place as the main Turf War band in Splatoon 2. But Now or Never was still the anthem for the end of a Turf War. And though this new five-piece band brings their own more complex, more ska-inspired sound to Splatoon 2, they still respected Now or Never and decided only to touch it up in their style, not to recompose it. Splatoon 2's Now or Never is a cover song, just as both the Squid Sisters and Off the Hook cover it in the Splatfest versions. And Splatoon 2 has a band with a tighter ska-inspired feel and different members. So naturally, their version is going to play with what the original had, but remain faithful and serve the same purpose as the original. 
It blows my mind. This is such a cool way to portray the passage of time between two games. And you know, all this music may be loud, bold, and booyah, but it's also personable. Most game soundtracks are non-diegetic and non-canonical, meaning they exist outside the physical game environment and do not have any effect on the story. Splatoon's soundtrack is non-diegetic, but it does exist within the lore of Splatoon, as a band of characters playing it. That makes the soundtrack into a character of sorts itself, cheering you on in gameplay and changing, even maturing over time, with the advancing tide of culture. And even after the final Splatfest of Splatoon 2, here's hoping that it doesn't stop advancing. With that, I'd like to thank Davogato once again for the game footage on this video, and I'd like to thank my brother Manticord for the supplementary guitar work. I'm Scruffy, and thank you very much for watching.